I'd, I'd just like to echo um, some of the previous comments on time. Uh, all of us, for our, our time, is probably the main constraint. Um, whatever we do by e-communications, it has to be as efficient, prioritized, and rationed as international travel and meetings. Um, most of us struggle to find time in the day to, to, to sit behind the computer and, and uh, network. Um, and in that uh, sense, I think I agree with Mark that um, what really drives participation is task-oriented networking rather than just an interesting subject, um, however um, pertinent it may be. Um, although I think if, if one looks at you know, what are the things that, that I watch out for in my intray, it's you know, significant advance in policy and practice, where, where are we, where is understanding changing? That's the kind of thing I might want to pick up once a month, not you know, as it happens, um, would, would be the, the challenge. And in terms of topics, um, I agree with those that have been suggested. Uh, two, two that I might add, one is um, a lot of thought increasingly going to the post-MDG framework. Um, where are we going to uh, advocate for what will it be, rural development, agriculture, food security, um, in a post-MDG framework. Um, uh, and linked to that, uh, I think increasing attention to the connection uh, with global resource scarcity, energy, water, land, biodiversity. Um, that, that's, I think, particularly in the context of Rio, is going to be a big issue in the coming year. Thank you. Great. The thing I love about John is he gets your mind moving in areas. I was never thinking about post... I'm working in the United Nations. We don't think about post-MDGs. <laughs> We're building up to the MDG targets. He's saying what happens post-MDGs. Thank you. Thank you, John. And that also the point on resource scarcity. Monica, please. I think those who know me well know two subjects that are very close to my heart <laughs> at the moment. And these are two subjects that have been mentioned several times during the past day. The one is the question of public-private partnerships, or let's not call it public-private partnerships, but the roles of the public and the private sector in rural development. We had quite an interesting debate yesterday on this, and I think quite a number of people would like to engage in a discussion on what is the role, and that was mentioned this morning as well, what is the role of the public sector? In my experience, the public sector has lost view of its own role, and that's been repeated in a number of countries. And they shouldn't fall back, they, we shouldn't run the risk of them falling back into, let's say, the role of taking over the private sector responsibilities. The other issue which we see coming up quite a bit at the moment is the regional integration issue. Um, no country can survive on its own, and um, these regional, uh, this regional integration uh, is necessary to, uh, to, to achieve results in terms of agricultural and rural development. So I think that those are two issues which I would like to request my colleagues uh, to think about, and maybe we could think about uh, setting up a small team. In terms of the, the way we work, um, I think it's very important that we try to set, because of everyone's time constraints and uh, shifting you know, prior priorities, piling up on top of each other, I think it would be good if we do start on some work, is to clearly define what, what kind of results do we want to achieve at the end of the day mm -hmm. and what, what the time frame is for achieving those results so that everyone can see really, uh, you know, uh, get a clear vision of what is going to come out of this whole process. Um, I know CADEP is, be, is an ongoing uh, issue, but uh, I think even the CADEP task team would benefit from, let's say, uh, more uh, clarity, let's say, on a certain number of results going towards specific events or uh, changes in the uh, CADEP framework. Thank you. Monica, thanks for those remarks on CADEP, because I, I, a week does not go by when I don't read a very lucid comment from you to the CADEP task team. So I did want to ask you about how you felt the, 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 the no, and don't, but it's important uh, uh, on, on what is happening in, in that particular network. And again, you've emphasized what John was saying about, about being task-orientated and looking at results, looking at timeframes of deliverables. 
Uh, and it's a point that Nikita spoke about offline. We need to, the platform needs to show results. If we're to, to talk to our own institutions about what the platform does, we need some results. Others, please. Frank. Well, I think um, I'd like to echo and support all the comments made to date and I congratulate the platform on, on the work that's, uh, um, that's been doing. I enjoyed your, the WebEx experience I had. Couldn't work the technology, great, but uh, it was very useful. To me, one of the big strengths of the global donor platform is knowledge management. And it's an issue that I think most of us struggle, struggle with. So I think perhaps um, one aspect that you might look at is linkages in with other knowledge management centers, such as the Commission, the OECD, the World Bank, etc. Because you can't have everything on the global donor platform in rural development, but it would be very useful if someone hits conservation agriculture, here it is, here is what the platform members are doing, here's the useful websites, etc. so that there will be basically a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. uh, if the, the donor platform could work as a one-stop shop then for knowledge management, for directions as to where you might go. So once you hit that, you would then have the full, because there's nothing worse than needing to know what the up-to-date situation is on a particular topic and then missing out on a particular uh, development because you happen to be on the wrong website or etc. Very good. Thanks, for, Frank. The importance of linkages then and hot links into other sites. Pascal, you could... Eleanor from the Global Mechanism, please. Thank you. Um, now, I just wanted to add, in terms of the topic, I very much support uh, what uh, Monica said, public-private partnerships and also regional integration are extremely important. But also, I wanted to um, stress another point, talking about the silos and uh, overcoming the silos approach. It would be very useful for the platform to try and reach out to other platforms in other sectors. Um, I'm talking about a for trade which doesn't seem to be a catchy word in the this context, especially because it uses a jargon, which is the trade jargon and not the ARD jargon. So it might sound as a concept which is very far away from this group. But really, if you participate in those discussions, then you may find out that really private sector engagement and regional integration are really the top priorities. And we all know the, the, the extremely important uh, influence that trade has on food security, which is really now on top of the agenda, and also on private sector engagement, because eventually investing in trade means creating the basis for private sector to engage, because uh, public investment in trade-related issues may, means uh, to cover externalities and uh, costs for public goods that companies do not want to, uh, to cover themselves. And therefore, I think that creating this bridge between the platforms and other platforms in different sectors, it would be fundamental. Good. And just to conclude one thing, it's not only uh, a weakness, let's say, let's call it like this, of the platform, but it's also on the other side because WTO two years ago became a member of yes. this platform, yes. but they haven't been very proactive. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, Exactly. Since we are also a go between, we are also trying to sensitize them in this direction to Good. be more. Good. Uh, I appreciate the last point on WTO. <laughs> Damien from, from Belgium, please. And then Sonia, and then Sally. Sally. And Christian. Okay. Uh, I think we've already identified quite an impressive amount of, uh, of priorities, so uh, I wish all the good luck to the, to, the, to the platform to set up the real priorities, uh, well, all our priorities, but I wanted to highlight uh, uh, another one. I think the platform has been uh, quite instrumental in, in setting up uh, and, and focusing on, uh, on aid effectiveness uh, in the RRD sector. Now we have, uh, we have had Busan, so we have a new paradigm going from aid effectiveness to develop effect, development effectiveness. So um, I think it might be useful to have a discussion what that implies for traditional donors like, like us. So uh, I would... Um, Join Breakout 4 in half an hour. <laughs> Good. Um, well, so I look forward to that. <laughs> and then another one is land. I think uh, the platform has been involved quite Quite a lot as well on land. Now uh, we hope to finalize the VG's negotiations in March, uh, and it, well, probably in this year or maybe early next year. Also, uh, there would be some some evolution on, on the right principles. 
Uh, so that would also uh, imply some uh, some new challenges on, on that topic. So uh, once we, we have those documents, I think the platform should continue working on, on the land issues. Great. Damon, thanks very much for that. S Sally, please. Uh, Sonia. Sonia, Sonia, apologies. Sonia, Sonia, yes, please, Sonia. Thanks, Brian. Um, yes, thanks for this very interesting session. I think I really enjoyed this, actually, getting the views from other members as well on what is working and what not. And um, you asked a specific question about the CADEP task mm -hmm. team. And um, what for me really works in this group is really the exchange of information from, um, from other development partners and also the organized exchange with partner institutions like the AUC and PCA. And this really helps to deepen our understanding on what is, what is happening and really guides on some of our actions as well. So I think this is one of the core issues really of this of this group. For this, of course, we all need to, to um, take part in it and share our information. But um, it also, what I find particularly helpful is to really make the bridge between what we're doing at headquarters and what is happening at the country level a lot smaller. We had joined um, telephone conferences with agriculture donor working groups and where we really saw how far we sometimes are away from the realities on the ground and um, we've tried to reach out more to those as well and I think this is really what we should focus on more in the future as well to um, to get more in contact there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. And um, just Sorry. to conclude, um, just to throw another topic into the round of what mm -hmm. is already emerging as well. But uh, what is coming up more and more as well now in Africa with the emerging investment plans and renewed strategies is really agricultural education um, comprising all the range from technical vocational training and tertiary education as well. There is already a small working group working on that, but uh, at least for us this is becoming more and more important. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. And for those who don't know Sonia's history, past coordinator from the Platform Secretariat, very glad to have you back with us during the session. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, good morning. I just wanted to pick up on a, a couple of points that came up through the day yesterday, mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. being mentioned here mm -hmm. about um, kind of communications and, and influencing. And Brian, you alluded just now to to the messaging in the media this morning about the Sahel crisis. So, um, I mean, clearly the, the the platform is an informal network, and the primary mm -hmm. focus is knowledge sharing and and. Um, networking, but to the extent that you are also uh, wanting to communicate key messages and influence processes, I guess, you know, Oxfam is, is interested in seeing, particularly in, in the light of upcoming events such as Rio and the G20, where we can find common areas of Good. messaging to work okay. together on. Um, and so that's something I'd certainly be interested in, in, in um, following up on. Um, and I guess, you know, given, given the sort of informal nature of this network, there may also be ways in which through working with other mm -hmm. um, uh, platforms or alliances that uh, informal messaging um, can also happen. So I think, I, I guess that would be a strong, uh, in the short amount of time we have here, a strong um, uh, message I would like to give about the importance of alliances in terms of influencing, particularly when, when you're working in an informal sort of setting. Um, in terms of the different issues, I thought it might be helpful just to headline um, two or three of the areas that in terms of work on um, agricultural policy and investment that Oxfam is likely to be focusing on the coming coming year because there's a lot of synergy. And so the issue around um, the, the role of the public sector in, in the governance of private sector investment is something we're very keen to explore more and that's kind of come up, um, I mean, both in the sense that, that, that Monica is talking about we're interested in looking at positive models of new business models of private um, sector collaboration with small farmers in particular, um, but also understanding much better the, the role of public sector in the governance and it's an area we're already doing some research on. And so we'd be very interested to see how um, we can share information, knowledge, and, and thinking about that. Um, the second area is around the sort of monitoring of uh, um, the impact of investments yep. in agriculture, yep. Yep. donor, and other. And I think there's, there's clearly a convergence there across a whole range of actors um, that 
that um, were already alluded to in the keynote address, um, and that's certainly something post Busan and post this meeting we'd be interested in following up on. The third area which I've heard less about here, but which is of great concern to us, is, is how we're really thinking about women's rights and gender equity in um, pushing forward agricultural rural development policy investments, and particularly you know, that as well as the resilience issues as we're moving to a scenario with much greater involvement of private sector investment. How are we, and that's where the, the, the public governance comes in, how are we really ensuring mechanisms of accountability there? So, um, interested in, in follow-up on any of those much. issues. Thanks. I appreciate and support that point about the, the alliances and the influencing, Sally. Christian. Thank you very much and good morning to everybody. I have a rather, a rather simple point. Um, we often say that we share knowledge of what the members of the platform do, but what we don't really share is policies, strategies and approaches. And they might differ for very interesting reasons. And uh, whenever I, I join working groups or teleconferences, I, I get a sense of what various members um, of, the, of the platform um, how they're working under which policies and strategies and approaches. But it's not that, so to say, in a structured way, the platform is collecting this information from the various members and even maybe analyzes the differences for discussions. And I, I'm, you know, we're the smallest partner, very small partner in comparison to the World Bank. So um, uh, there's no comparison. But we are my, maybe much more dependent on information on donor approaches and I had this discussion with Albert Engel on GIZ, I had the discussion with a number of, uh, of colleagues, because I think it is interesting for the world to see how the policies are emerging, changing and adapting to certain situations. Mm -hmm. We all work under these policies and strategies, but I don't think we have enough knowledge of each other in this regard. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, Lynn, Chantal. Josephina. Yeah, I'll uh, take up John's point um, on the post-MDG agenda. Uh, the beauty of working in the UN is our agencies are so large that we often don't know what they're up to. Um, so the post-MDG agenda is actually very much on an express track at the moment. There was a large task team meeting in New York last week. It's headed by UNDP and DESA. Um, there is a sort of concept note out which has at the minute about five working groups on it on things like aid effectiveness, partnerships, um, processes going forward, emerging issues, which I think is a critical one. So there was the, the sort of large meaning of everybody. It's all the UN agencies and the Bretton Woods um, there was, there's been, this has been a whole week of feedback on those task teams with a number of agencies saying that they would like it collapsed into two or three because they can't cover all five. Um, but this is on a very fast track. Those task teams need to report by something like the end of March and the paper needs to be done by the end of May. So I think in terms of influence in, in, in terms of how it goes forward, emergent issues, the time is definitely now. Um, I mean, in this, I don't know all the members of this group, but certainly EFAD are on it, FAO's on it, the World Bank's on it, um, and I can give you the names of your representatives. You can <laughs> forward the emails today, Lynn. Yeah, <laughs> so that you can see who you need to lobby within your organizations. Mm. But yeah, Excellent. we, we should you. have an influence. Chantal, please. Thank you. Chantal from the, uh, Simmons from the European Commission. I'd like to uh, mention the three themes we would like to the platform to work on. Uh, some of them have already been uh, uh, mentioned, but I would like to add uh, on post-harvest losses. We think it's a very important issue, but we would like also if the platform could find a way of uh, either doing it or, or partner with another platform to deal with the, the issue of food waste in developed countries. Because there is a kind of continuum and there is a very strong link with the, the developing countries. Um, another one is private sector and, uh, and public sector, their respective roles. And a third one is aid effectiveness, in particular in the context of uh, risk and to pick up on what Stefan mentioned, in spite of risk and stability and to overcome them. And I think there we have really challenges that we, uh, we, uh, we don't Thank have yet the tools. Thank you very much, Chantal. As Damien said earlier, we're giving, a cell, we're giving ourselves lots of work. 
<laughs> be careful where you're pointing the fingers. This is us that's going to be doing it. Now we've got a couple of minutes to run here. Uh, and just on, maybe on the method, I think uh, what was mentioned and we would like to emphasize is the task oriented and what you mentioned also identify a core group of mm, really exactly. push pushers and the, the second uh, uh, tier. And we look forward to your, your involvement in that, Chantal. <laughs> You're not going to get away. Nikita, please. Thanks, Brian. Just a quick point on process. I think it's, it's important to explicitly articulate the differing level of effort that's required to advance an issue. And I don't think every issue needs a formal working group. Uh, Absolutely. You, you can imagine a, a differing level of effort, like with the CADAP working group meeting every two weeks or every week, the Ag Research Group meeting every four to eight weeks. But I think at the other end of the spectrum, um, coordinating donors around a one-off specific event, like a workshop on Busan or a workshop mm. on livestock, can, can act as the seed for perhaps then a, then a working group. Yep. Josefina, please, and then Santa Lisa and Ernan. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Uh, you know, coming from the African Development Bank, uh, regional bank with uh, very little resources, sometimes we are interested in some areas, but we do not have resources to address those areas. And we are interested in almost everything because whatever can develop our member countries is of interest to us. Now, what I wanted to ask is that, uh, you know, sometimes we, are inter we, 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 we would want to collaborate with uh, the platform members, and I was wondering whether it is we can use uh, Pascal's, uh, some of the tools of communication to invite some platform members to work with us. In many cases, I am uh, maybe preparing a project in Mozambique or another country, and there is a gap, and I could put it out there in the platform using one of the communications and say, I have this project, and this is the gap, and these are areas that I cannot be able to cover. Can somebody out there say whether they can be able to cover those areas, and then we can start working from that's, there? And that's Fiona's question earlier, I think, as well. Yeah, excellent. Santa Lisa, please. Okay, thank Thanks, you. Josefina. Thank you. I think uh, we have uh, listed a lot of trendy issues and some of a little bit less trendy, but there's a one issue I would like to add is the green economy, green growth or e green inclusive e economy. Or, so how to include agriculture in that? And I think uh, if you think of Rio, this will be yep. very trendy very soon. Yep. 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 And and uh, then uh, I just want to say that I really much appreciate uh, the back-to-office reports of the international meetings because often the, the official reports you get from diplomats, they don't look at the agriculture rural development issues. So you really get, uh, get the specific uh, sector information from those. Thank you very much. Please, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Ishmael from Sakao. I just want to reinforce uh, the areas that um, have already been mentioned by others, particularly uh, those of interest to, to, my, to my organization. Uh, the area of uh, PPPs in uh, agricultural development, I think, are uh, critical. And uh, within that context, uh, the issue of um, value chain development, mm -hmm. discussions around that from a donor perspective could be, could be useful. And us feeding into that process from a practical perspective uh, as a farmer's organization. Issues of climate change, obviously, mm -hmm. and um, um, policy on investment, as well as the area of extension and information. Information being a critical ingredient in the management of risk and resonating very well with the topic of resilience. Uh, what, uh, to a large extent, your capacity to to, to, to thrive and, uh, and, and grow is um, largely dependent on the access to information uh, of one kind or the other. But much closer to my heart, I, I, I would wish that um, the donor platform would uh, also have a frank and honest discussion about their approaches to institutional development, whether they are actually harmonizing their resources towards support to uh, institutions at the community level, national level, uh, regional level. After all, I think a uh, strengthening of institutions requires uh, that harmonized approach from all uh, those who seek to be uh, providing uh, financial and technical services to come together. If you could come up with um, a project or come up with examples where it has been effectively done um, by donors coordinating and cooperating 
within um, mm. a set uh, objective to mm. one particular organization, mm. that would mm. be wonderful. Mm. But surely that has to be country-specific, though. That harmonization of donor approaches to capacity development for institutions has to be, it has to happen, but it'll be at the country, the country, very much at the country level. We've got some time issues. I'd like to ask Pascal for a, a little moment on interactivity. Ernan is going to have a word. Frank Flood also from Ireland would like a second word, the Irish, the Irish. And I will, Gary will have a... Oh, well, actually, I, I, thought I, I thought I'd kept quiet up until now, uh, but seeing as how everyone else seems to have spoken, I might as well add my few wishes to the, to the long list that um, it needs to be mentioned. I think that we, um, you, apropos of the discussion yesterday around resilience and, uh, and metrics for it, I think that um, the, uh, we, we should be continuing work on management for results in food security um, in terms of getting better metrics. And that's something that links into the post-MDG uh, agenda as well. Uh, and also in terms of inclusive target setting and inclusive po policy making. Uh, so I think that's something that's worth working on. I would support the ideas around uh, having a, a, um, a group working on pastoralist livelihoods. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's the same as livestock, but uh, that's the, I think that's an issue that has come up a lot uh, and is something that, uh, that uh, there, there are proposals around doing work on that. And, and a, a kind of a new, and another issue which is related particularly to the, to the management for results one is I, I, I'm very interested in, in um, how uh, donors go about supporting country level capacity for um, for research and analysis uh, around food security policies and strategies mm -hmm. uh, and that at, you know not just national systems in terms of public systems but also independent research capacity and community level uh, information and all, all those sorts of things Good. so that, that's something that you brought up in the Busan meetings I remember Frank Pascal can you give us a few moments on interactivity and then Frank and then finally Gary thank I you, think you uh, can you? Yeah. Yep. You can. Uh, you're uh, referring to what we discussed on the, the blog comment section. The issue of the platform members feeding information in, yes. asking questions, setting up a, a, yeah. a blog, a Facebook page, whatever. What's your? I think what what is very important from from that point is, as you can see, there's a, a, a big variety of interesting subjects. It's uh, it's it's always important to to know that interest doesn't necessarily translate into demand. You walk into a shop, you see a lot of interesting magazines, you don't buy them all. Yeah. So for us here, it's also very important to, to see um, that our tools, when they are applied, are embedded in, in certain themes that are carried through to have a continuity that ensures that there's a certain demand stream in it. So if you have a good tool, not trying to use it over and over again just because the tool seems to be very advanced because then it runs off on its own and, and okay. it's all of a sudden doesn't get the traction. So what we uh, discussed in the, in the work group was also to maybe install a section on the website where members can exchange their views um, where they log in and you have sort of a commentary blog exchange platform and that need, would need to be embedded in certain themes and carried out by, okay. by individuals. Let's talk about the technical yeah. details about thanks for giving us the scope. Now, Frank, briefly. Tell uh, me. Very briefly, I think um, one other issue, I'm sorry to add to the list, but um, it would be the importance of agriculture linking and supporting nutrition. It's, it's, it's there it's, it's at this stage, it's, uh, it's well established, but I think it's important that it's an issue not to be forgotten. I was in Malawi at the, um, the National IPRI organised promoting health and agriculture, and uh, it was the Department of Agriculture they looked to really promote health and the importance of nutrition. There is a lot of work being done already, so come back to my earlier point on linkages, and perhaps uh, the platform could simply link into the Sun team. Okay, that's, that's a certainly, and, but if the, when you say the platform, you're speaking of yourself, Frank. You are the member of the platform, sure. and it means that Frank Flood is going to help us take forward the, nutri the nutrition agenda. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic, but I mean, this is where the buck has to stop. Mm -hmm. on with us to all of us
A very brief you, comment. Uh, just, a, just another Gary. tool that hasn't been covered in the list yet. In the investment centre, we're finding the use of wikis to be very effective in terms of bringing small groups of people together, say in project preparation or a discussion about a theme, because you can post information into the wiki and you can post comments and, and share ideas. Good. And people can step in and out when, time, when they have time, rather than having to stick to particular agendas. So another tool to Thanks, add. Thanks, Gary. That's creeping in at EFIT as well. Listen, we're going to close now. Thank you so much for that feedback and, and interactivity. Much appreciated. I'd now like to hand back to, to Sam for the next steps. Thank Thanks you. very much to Brian, Pascal, and...